In the late 1910s, plans were made to provide electricity in Victoria. And with the creation of the State Electricity Commission, or SEC, in 1921, its inaugural chairman, Sir John Monash, announced the Commission's objective as nothing less than revolutionising the industrial development of Victoria. By 1930, Yalorn, the state's second power station, was up and running, with a new terminal station at Richmond distributing its power to central Melbourne. For Victoria, the 1930s, 40s and 50s were a time of immense growth and industrial expansion, matched by ever-increasing demand for electricity from Melbourne's CBD and surrounding suburbs. To satisfy that demand and support the growth and prosperity of the state as a whole, Richmond was soon joined by two new terminal stations in Brunswick and West Melbourne. With their state-of-the-art equipment, these three became a critical component of the energy infrastructure that would serve the community for decades. Now, to meet the needs of Melbourne's continually growing CBD and inner suburbs, the Edison Project, named after the famous pioneer of electrical lighting, has embraced the challenge of simultaneously rebuilding these terminal stations to ensure the lights stay on for the future of all Melburnians. infrastructure that was built for Melbourne you know 40 or 50 or 60 years ago in some cases but it was landlocked and it was quite a compressed site so in the end the replacement of this infrastructure with something that would much better serve customers around the inner metropolitan part of Melbourne and Melbourne CBD particularly really required a very sophisticated approach to replace the infrastructure that had sort of outgrown its current location uh, with traditional infrastructure, but now with modern infrastructure could be far better accommodated in those, in those locations. The Edison Project is funded by City Power for Brunswick and is funded through our Transmission Revenue Reset for West Melbourne and Richmond. Although this is a large investment, one of the things that we are absolutely committed to is keeping these as low cost as they can be. Uh, recently, when the East-West Link was cancelled, we were able to re-look at the project at West Melbourne. We were able to go to a different solution that still has the same benefits for the local community, still has a reliable electricity supply, but is materially less expensive. Because of its size and complexity, this is necessarily a large investment for us across the three sites, but it really reflects our commitment to our customers and our commitment to um, keeping the electricity supplies on for them. With 160 uh, plus people on site at a particular point in time um, for delivery, it's, it's very challenging um, and, and it really requires very coordinated effort on, on the part of the safety leaders to make sure that everyone knows what they're doing, risks are identified and, and managed uh, on, on the site and, and on a complex site like that it's quite a challenge. Nowadays we have safe work method statements which detail every task people do, uh, identify all the risks with those tasks and all the hazards and control measures that we put in place and who's responsible for implementing them. As well as that we do daily job safety analysis where they look at the job on a daily basis, look at the environment around them and what the risks are and how they manage those. Everyone is equally responsible so we all like to talk to each other, we all communicate with each other and all work on the same page. To deliver these large projects, we can't do it on our own. We have a number of service providers and contractors. Uh, we collectively call them delivery partners because we're keen to make sure they partner with us on these projects and particularly uh, on, on the safety front. Achieving a thousand uh, recordable injury-free days in Brunswick is uh, quite a challenge and it's, it comes down to the commitment and, and the capability of the people on site, particularly the, uh, the safety leaders uh, and the crews um, and our delivery partners. It's, it's a combined effort and all centred around our Mission Zero um, safety program and strategy. 
we haven't been injury free completely on the Edison project. We've had um, some injuries on our Richmond site, um, which we've investigated thoroughly and learned from, and that helps us go forward to make sure that we don't have repetition of those injuries uh, on other sites such as Brunswick uh, going forward. We face many challenges across these projects. I can highlight number one is safe delivery, obviously. And secondly, we must maintain supply security during the whole construction period. Number three, we must practice comprehensive environmental management system during the construction because all sites are very close to waterways of Melbourne City. And we also have got project specific challenges. At Richmond Terminal Station, the main issue we have got is we have got very limited space availability. Therefore, our strategy at Richmond Terminal Station is to create some assets and transfer part of the network and demolish the transferred area to get the space for next stage. At West Melbourne Terminal Station, we have the same space restriction and also we have got limitations from access road. Also, we have got issues from water authorities due to flood level considerations. The main issue at Brunswick Terminal Station is how we manage the community expectation over there. Therefore, we have got robust control systems in place to make sure that we meet all the conditions outlined in the planning permit. Service delivery being the major delivery arm of our company, would not be able to deliver a project this size by themselves. They need asset management involvement. They need all the other divisions such as in their finance, corporate comms take a major involvement. We have Select Solutions Division. They're doing all the landscaping around there. They're doing also all of the, um, the waterworks. And there's Geomatic Technology, which is looking after all our data and uh, inputs such as uh, still photography of the um, site so we can record what's actually going on. At any given time, we have got more than 15 different service providers working with us more than 200 people working across these projects, more than 60 different mobile plants being used. Therefore, our delivery strategy for these projects has been designed to make sure that we manage all the interface issues between various different service providers. It's an all-in-one team event, very significant. A lot of players in it, and the one takeaway for me is that if you're involved in Edison, it's very hard to distinguish which division you come from because you're working as the one team. Being a good corporate citizen, being a good corporate neighbour is not unlike just being a good neighbour. We have people that we live amongst and an environment in which we live that we get to know. At Brunswick Terminal Station, we had to excavate massive amounts of basalt, which involved very loud rock breaking for very many months. So that involves a fair amount of goodwill that's necessary to um, expect your neighbours to put up with that. In the case of Richmond Terminal Station, we have a project that's going to go for more than seven years. We're directly across the road from a primary school and there's gonna be significant noise, dust, traffic. We make sure we understand the project itself, therefore we can sort of predict the impacts and the likely response from the community. At Osnet Services we are integrated in the project teams so that we are able to very quickly provide the feedback back to the project manager and construction teams and hopefully address it if it's possible and get back to that person with a response. Some of the key risks that the project is facing is ensuring that all the work is coordinated so that we maintain good secure supply to the CBD and surrounding suburbs. So the work has to be very well coordinated 
and also make sure that our delivery for the project fits in with peak summer time frames so we continue to provide good quality, reliable supply to our customers. I think the teams work very hard to establish a good sound risk culture right across all the service providers and our internal team so that risk management is built into all the day-to-day -day activities that they do. Some of the other activities that the team has done involves risk workshops every quarter that are very detailed, that work through all the work that's due in the next period to make sure that everything has been thought of and mitigated where possible. And also a focus on emerging risks. Um, and we encourage every member of the team to share any thoughts they have on emerging risks and conditions that they see in the project so that again we can give some pre-thinking to those and put some treatment plans in place. This project's quite unique for its scale, the complexity, the technical complexity, which is a brownfields reconstruction. So it's not a greenfield. Greenfields can be quite um, significant and challenging, but here we're replacing components of these terminal stations, managing the risk, managing the supply to critical infrastructure in, in Melbourne CBD, and all the time making sure the continuity of the supply is always there. From an Osnet Services perspective, the teamwork was just uh, outstanding. What I saw was a, over a long period of time a very strong commitment between the design team, the customer communications team, the construction team, our delivery partners in terms of construction, local council, all those lines of communication, that teamwork. So there were teams within teams but certainly from my perspective they worked extremely well, very efficiently, delivering and continue to deliver a, a great product. Safety is a huge, huge focus on site. I've been on site a number of times and the effort uh, to maintain those sites uh, safe and secure for people who work there has been uh, outstanding.